Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG and today we shall talk about a register location algorithm called Iterated Register Coalescing or IRC for short. IRC is one of the most well-known allocators mostly because it appears as the main topic in a chapter in Andrew Appel's book Modern Compiler Implementation. That's an example of a register locator based on the model of graph coloring. IRC has many phases, and these phases interact in a somehow complicated way. This figure shows the main phases and how they interact. In the rest of this class, we shall talk about each one of these phases. The first phase of iterated register coalescing is called build. In this phase, we build the interference graph of the program, using live range information to this end. Next, we have the simplify phase. In this phase, we apply CAMP's heuristic, which we saw in the last class, to check if the interference graph can be colored with K colors. After simplify, we have a phase called coalesce. In this phase, we try to merge nodes that are related by copies. These nodes will receive the same color as they become a single vertex. Coalescing again is this problem of trying to assign copy-related variables to the same register. We must be careful when merging nodes because this operation might increase the chromatic number of the interference graph. That's usually a bad idea, as spills are more expensive than copies. There are many different heuristics to ensure that merging preserves the chromatic number of graphs. For instance, Briggs heuristics says that we can coalesce two nodes when the resulting node has less than k neighbors of high degree. George's heuristic, in turn, says that we can coalesce if the neighbors of one of the nodes either already interferes with the other or has low degree. Perhaps you should stop the video and think about these heuristics. Try to figure out why they preserve CAMP's reducibility, that is, the ability to simplify the entire graph via CAMP's heuristics. When we cannot neither simplify nor coalesce nodes, we select some dashed edges and remove them. This effectively means giving up coalescing. This stage is called freezing. Finally, we spill. That's not really actual spilling yet. We remove a node from the graph in hopes that we can color it later, once we start popping the nodes in camps ordering. Even though the node was not simplifiable, we might still be able to color it. Again, camps elimination is a heuristic, and even when it fails, that does not mean that the graph is not colorable. We need to find a good candidate to spill. There are many heuristics. Here we show a simple cost model. This model gives priority to spilling variables that have many neighbors and that are outside loops. Perhaps you want to stop the video and check the algorithm to compute the spilling cost of each variable. The lower the spilling cost, the higher the chance that a variable will be spilled. Later on, there will be an example of how this cost is applied. The second to last phase of IRC is called SELECT. At this point, we assign colors to registers using the reverse order produced by CAMP's elimination heuristic. And finally, we have actual spilling. It's possible that we fail to find a color to a given variable that was marked as a potential spill. In this case, there will be an actual spill. We will insert loads and stores in the program to map a variable to memory. The interference graph will be rebuilt and we will start everything all over again. Let's demonstrate how the algorithm works with this example on the left side of the figure, this program on the left. We are assuming a setting with three registers. The program's interference graph can be seen on the right. Notice that we cannot simplify any nodes, for all of them are either 
linked with some coalescing edge or have three or more neighbors. Thus, we need to spill some variable to memory. We compute costs using the formula that we had already seen. I'm copying it again to you right here. The spilling cost of each variable appears on this table. The variable with the lowest spilling cost is C. So we evict it to memory. After removing C, we have a much lighter interference graph. C is not only outside the program's loop, it's also, it also has lots of neighbors. Thus, removing it from the graph simplifies things tremendously. We can then coalesce a few variables. If you recall it, we have seen two criteria to run coalescing. I'm copying them in this figure. Perhaps you would like to stop the video and check which pairs of variables we can coalesce in the graph on the right. The order in which we coalesce the variables is not really important in this case. We can merge vertices A and E, for instance. We can also merge B and R2 using George's criterion. Well, Briggs' criterion would also work in this case. And we can continue coalescing nodes. For instance, we can merge vertex AE with vertex R1. However, we cannot merge this new vertex with vertex D, for there is an interference edge between D and both vertices A and E. Now we can either freeze or simplify nodes. We start freezing the dashed edge between nodes A, E, R, 1 and node D. Then we simplify the nodes. We can simplify any node as their maximum degree is 2 and we have three colors. But notice that it doesn't really make sense to simplify the pre-color nodes R3, R2 and R1 because there is, well, they are already colored. Now we need to color the nodes. We will have problems to color vertex C. No color is available to it because it's adjacent to three nodes and each one has been merged with a pre-colored node. So neither R1 nor R2 nor R3 is available for vertex C. In this case, we must spill. So C was a potential spill. But now we find that it must indeed be spilled. Thus, we map it into memory inserting loading stores in the program. After that, we start the entire algorithm all over again. You can see the modified program in the middle of the figure. Notice that we have inserted a store right after the definition of C and a load right before its use. That's again the spilling approach that we call spill everywhere, which we had seen before when we saw linear scan. That's the simplest way to rewrite a program. After we insert load and stores in the program, we have a new interference graph. Notice that now we have two new variables, C0 and C1, which represent the definition and the use of variable C. And although this new graph has more vertices, it has less edges, it's less dense. We can again coalesce some of the copy-related variables in the graph. The only exception are the copies involving variable D and variables A and E, as they interfere. The resulting graph is given on the bottom left of the figure, right here. We freeze this dashed edge and simplify all the nodes. We remove D because that's the only vertex that's not really pre-colored. It does not really make sense to simplify the pre-colored nodes again. Their coloring has already been decided. So we are now left with several pre-colored nodes and we must find a color for D. But it's easy. D can be allocated into R3, which is the only free color among the colors used by these neighbors. And after mapping variables to registers, this program on the right is the code that we obtain. And after removing the copies that got the same register, thus doing coalescing, we obtain this code on the right. And with this example, we are done with the iterated register coalescing algorithm. 
IRC was introduced by George and Appel in a paper from 1996. But the more general idea of register location by graph coloring was invented by Gregory Chaitin while he was working at IBM in 1981.